Hey everyone, this is Sam and welcome to my Monster Hunter Rise Best Builds tutorial. Today I'll be showing you the best armor pieces, skills and decorations you need for massive criticals. I'm going to show you the perfect combination so you can crit every time and you can use this build actually for all of the weapons in the game with a little bit of modification. So in that sequence you see right there 100% critical and 1000 plus damage. So if you would like to see more builds or even specific tutorials on every weapon in this game, you can actually click on the card above or the link in the description below and you'll find a playlist on every video I have made on Master Hunter Rise. Also, you can uh, add my friend code right there so we can go on hunts on the Switch together and make sure to subscribe for more MHR content all year long. So for this build, the final numbers coming in when you have everything set up right, it's going to be 100% critical, 40% plus stagger and 35% increase in damage on all critical hits. So you can see it play out here, it's just every hit I do is a critical hit with that little uh, flash, that's why you know it's a critical and you can see it's extremely hard hitting. So that sequence was 89 DPS for 1774 damage. So let's break it down in detail on how we put all of this together. So your weapon of choice is up to you, but in this case, I was using the hammer, Knight Eternal. But all of the weapons you can use for this build must come from the uh, Nagakua monster tree, so make sure you focus on that. For this build to work best, and for you to start slowly building towards it, you actually need weapons that have 40% affinity minimum. So rarity level 3 from the Nagakua tree is where you're going to start seeing that. But in this case, I'm using a rarity level 6 hammer from the tree with 45% affinity. So that's more than enough. So here you can see with the Knight Eternal Hammer, I also decided to use the uh, Rampage skill attack boost because I don't need any more affinity. So the attack helps. And here are all the skills that you will end up getting when you complete this build and I want to break this down in detail because the key here is we're going to get to level 3 weakness exploit which is going to give us 50% increased affinity on weak spots and plus the 45% that comes with the night owl affinity that gives us 95% already between the weakness exploit and the night owl but this build also comes with that level 1 critical eye so that 5% makes it perfect it's exactly 100 and then also the critical hits that you do do is going to actually get 35% plus damage because of the critical boost on level 2 that comes with this build. And there's also 40% stagger on all headshots, which is a weak spot at level 3 for a slugger. So now you're going to have plus 40% stun power, plus 35% critical damage, and 100% critical chance on all headshots alongside the attack defense boost that comes with this build also. Now the pieces and materials you're going to need are these ones. For the helmet, you're going to need the Sino Grey, and those are the materials you need. Uh, make sure you hunt this uh, monster often, because you're also going to need it for the chest piece. Both of these together give you uh, one level of weakness exploit and one level of latent power. And uh, for the uh, braces, you're going to get you're going to hunt the uh, Anginov, because it's going to give you level 2 slugger and level 2 attack boost. And then also get the coil, which is going to give you uh, attack boost from the same monster, so hunt the Anginov and the Sino Core plenty. And then for the last piece, your boots is going to give you plus two uh, critical boosts and plus one latent power, and you want to hunt the Ranjang for that. And then to finish off this build, you're going to need the decoration skills. So uh, for all of those pieces to combine together, you actually have nine decoration slots in total, uh, two for level two and seven for level one jewels. And specifically, uh, you're going to start off with a defense, as, at least for me. For all the level one jewels, I like to put in defense. You can actually put whatever level one jewel you want. It's, it doesn't really matter for those seven spots. So defense for me personally, but this is a flex, so you can make your choice there. But the level two duo is very important. You must at least have one expert duo, level two, and that's going to give you the plus five critical chance. And then the second level two duo spot is also a flex spot. In that one, you can actually uh, put an attack duo level two if you want. Uh, I would say the ideal level 2 jewels for that flex spot is obviously attack duo for late game and then a destroyer jewel. You can get that a little bit earlier. That's part breaker. You can also get the KO jewel, which is going to give you one level of slugger. And you can definitely get this very early in the game. Uh, but you can also actually end it off with another expert jewel. So that's going to actually give you plus 10% critical. You can actually do that if you have a weapon that only has 40% affinity. That's why I said earlier, minimum 40%. Two expert duos will cover for that. And for the talisman, make sure you get one that comes with weakness exploit. And then the bonus skills, I got lucky here. I got the slugger. That's why I was able to get up to level three. But weakness, exploit, talisman for sure. So when it's all said and done, your final result should come out like this. 207 attack, uh, affinity at 45 with the weapon, 423 defense. 
But then with the boosters that comes with your skills, you can have uh, attack boost at 5, weakness exploit at 3, slugger at 3, latent power at 3, critical boost at 2, part breaker if you want, or another critical boost. Uh, switch skill, I have these equipped. Those are the ones I use with this weapon, but you can really use any weapon for this build, right? It doesn't have to be a hammer, because like, all hits you do on weak spots are gonna be critical. Like, I'm using a hammer here, and you can see like every hit I do, it's going to be a crit. And with a hammer, it's even deadlier because if I do the free charge yellow impact crater on down monsters, and because of the slugger, I'm going to down monsters a lot. Like here, to do this, you just have to hold CR and tap A while you're in blue hammer mode. That's going to put you into a fully charged yellow hammer mode. And from here, if you click CR plus A, you're going to launch yourself up with two minimum hits. And then these two hits are very light, but they're going to be crit anyways because it's on the head. I lined it up that way. And as you get in the air, you can actually adjust with the left stick so you make sure both hits land right on the head and you can see bang bang, both criticals, 424 each. That's pretty devastating damage. To me, this build though does play out better with weapons that you go for weak spots a lot. But honestly, you should be hitting with weak spots with any weapons. But for things like a hammer or like a great sword or like a bow, if you're just going for headshots, like this is crazy because everything is a crit and you can see as i stun the monster like everything i do critical 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 this is a very satisfying way to play and it's also it makes the fights really fast like i'm fighting the, the magnum here and you can see it haven't even been like five minutes i think i was able to kill this magnum in like nine minutes in this sequence i think or like nine or ten and I wasn't even going for a speed run. Like, I'm not super buff for a speed run in that case. And I was able to finish off really quickly. So, I just want you to compare here. You can see I'm using a regular hammer here. So one that doesn't have 40% affinity. I'm using the same armor set. And you can see the damage is just way more significant. When I'm using a hammer that has 40% to 45% plus affinity. And is much more consistent. Because literally every time it's a crit. Here, I'm using a high strength hammer. You can see the damage is high but it's like inconsistent so sometimes when it crits sometimes it doesn't well, even with the same armor set it's just not nearly as good but you can see when i do it with the uh 45 affinity hammer it's very consistent and it's very hard in it so definitely try this out for yourself uh as you're building up to this i would say you can start doing it the moment you see that you can hunt a naga kua because it's going to take you a maybe killing it at least five to seven times to get all of the materials you need because some of them is more rare and some of them you get faster if you do capture the monster but once you get to uh you can able to be able to fight a nakagua you can start getting these high affinity weapons at level three rarity three and that's for any weapon because any weapon from the nakagua tree actually is all very high affinity they all give you at least 40 and some of them go as high even as 45 but remember right 40 percent is good enough because you can get two expert jewels that's going to give you the uh 50 uh sorry that's going to give you the extra 10 percent you need to round out to be exactly 100 on all weak spots and can you live with 90 or 85 sure i mean it's it's very very damaging still right it's just 100 is crazy so uh as always if you want some De more detailed tutorials on the hammer like I showcased there you can check out my playlist click the card below or uh, go for the playlist in the description and uh, add me if you feel like it and uh, I would love to play together as always thanks for coming by I'll speak to all of you guys again very soon